In this new chapter, a large piece of land began to ignite. The tree trunk was seen burning in June. The tree trunk and the little bear were ready to throw it with all their might as it is. His father told him to do so, the huge wood. The log started moving towards the target, the little bear with crazy speeds. And we see that the target for the log was nothing but the rotten tree. The scouts, who were invading Troop 99's land, again in search of something started by each scout the tree. They scream in pain and agony as they began to burn because of the firewood thrown by the little bear in the southeast of June while both of them. Some also attacked the corrupt entities and halted the invasion. If you appreciate this as well, the father and son duo are combating corruption. S.E. June smiled upon witnessing the corrupt entities reduced to ashes, while he assured the child that the fire was effectively working against the wicked trees. The entities were burning rapidly, so June and the little bear had to deal only with those who survived the flames. And we were moving at a swift pace. But as it occurred in southeast June, he began to look around and saw the big rotten trees. The tower farmer was not able to understand what he should do. We did that, but suddenly we see that there is something. I collided with the big rotten tree from above, which hit the corrupt entities to their core. We see that there was no one but the black warrior rabbit attacking the big trees with all his might. Can he start breaking the trunks of the trees, one after the other with a tremendous force from his hammer and gentleness until the big trees were now screaming in pain because they had become prey to the black rabbit. But the surprises did not end there. One of the big trees that had escaped now was surprised by the big red claw of the mother bear that appeared immediately behind it and struck it to the ground without any mercy. Her eyes were full of anger and her claws felt like they had the overwhelming power of dinosaurs. She began to get rid of everything, a big rotten tree with a single blow. While both the mother bear and the black rabbit were fighting, John smiled, realizing with tension that it was a little scary that the black rabbit alone was enough for the big widespread invasion. But suddenly, a small rotten tree attacked the tower farmer from behind, which surprised John for a moment. But he immediately acted on the instinct to cut the scout tree into two equal pieces without even thinking. The corrupt entities appeared on the 99th floor again, but thanks to the quick response of the mother bear and immense strength, more damage was prevented in the farm in southeast. June. He was happy with the decision to move his house near the farm, which he thought was a good choice that he asked the mother bear to make as soon as possible. S.E. June remembered that he was talking to the mother bear, telling her that the relationship with the bull king had improved a lot and the area that the bears patrolled had also decreased. Now S.E. June was thinking that it was a good idea to create a space near the western forest focused on guarding the farm from the corrupt entities. S.E. June brought a large pile of red locust meat to the mother bear, telling her that she could also eat meat daily if that's what the mother bear wanted, to agree without any problems. And knowing that both S.E. June and the mother bear benefited from this agreement, he immediately called the little bear, asking him to go and pack his things. The little bear started jumping, excited to get a new place to live. While the scene turned back to the present, we see that the mother bear has defeated all the great corruption in the neighboring area. As the tower farmer said that this type of invasion was not difficult for her. S.E. June smiled. The mother bear was grateful for everything she had done. But when she looked around, she began to wonder when she would truly rid the corrupt entities. As they were creating chaos in S.E. Chun's farm, they also reached the palace to inform S.E. June that they were going to work on the fields. But even they were shocked when they saw that the corrupt entities had returned to floor 99. Seeing the help arriving in Southeast June immediately, he asked the great creatures to help him clean the neighboring area because all the new corrupt trees had destroyed the expanded farm and Southeast June could no longer work and was sad as he began to pick up the excess wood. Thinking he didn't have time to use his new abilities as a land angel, but as he picked up the wood from the left, he saw that the corrupt tree still had some life left in it. The corrupt creature began to scream that everything was there. But as S.E. June was frustrated, he immediately smashed the corrupt tree and removed all the life inside. The creature realized that it was corrupt. The trees were looking for another corrupt tree, but he didn't know where it was. When the scene changes, we return to the 52nd floor where the old teacher is located. Theo was walking towards somewhere. Theo was somewhat frustrated when the old man asked about the place. They were heading to because there was a dead end. If they continued in the same direction, the old man kept redirecting Theo back to the ground, still asking him if the old man was really able to exit the tower because Dongik told the cat that the road point was just the road point for the 
Thirtieth day. The floor was recorded, so Theo wondered how the old man was on 52. The old man revealed the ground he got to the 52nd floor through Lingen. Theo was shocked all over his body when he heard this name man wondered if the old man was talking about three-dimensional segmented fruit. According to Theo's knowledge, the fruit contained that energy and should not be used carelessly because it was not something made inside the black tower in the first place, which means that the fruit was illegal. Theo wanted the old fruit. The man must report this matter immediately to the traffic management office. But the old man told the merchant cat that for some reason, the linworm he had often disappeared and was then discovered by the local residents of the tower. So the old man decided to hide the matter entirely from Theo's point of view. He howled loudly while he saw the old man unlocking his bag like a thing, and as he revealed what was inside, Theo was speechless to see a creature resembling a plant, with multiple leaves and claws like legs. And we know that this creature was called Lindworm. Theo was somewhat afraid to see the Lindworm for the first time. It looked like a snake and started going behind the old man's legs, while telling the cat that these creatures had a short lifespan, so if they didn't use it now, they would use it soon. The old man finally decided that they had to go quickly. But Theo began to act out all the situations he was adopting, telling the old man that he would never use anything illegal. The old man bowed and the wandering merchant cat appeared. Carrying some bundles of churros, the two full packages were presented to the cat. But upon hearing that the cat was still not ready to do what the old man had done, he immediately threw both packages away and seeing this, the cat could not resist the temptation. She grabbed the sausage immediately, but she was using all the dirty tricks on the old teacher the whole time because Theo was now in the air. The dimensional fruit began to suck him in, and both the old teacher and Theo were now traveling through the dimensional gate. The fruit is his first journey. Theo was screaming at the top of his lungs, but suddenly he saw a bright light at the end of the gate where the scene transformed into a cant in Phoenix Tower on the 38th floor. Suddenly, Dongik turned around when he heard a rustling sound, but he saw that there was no one but his master and the merchant cat who appeared from behind. Cheek the forest was surprised when he saw both the old man and the merchant cat together, but multiple questions began to arise. He rose to his feet and asked the teacher about how he met Theo and what had happened to the curse of the fire. After defeating the wild boar, the elderly man had just smiled and was telling the student who had many questions. The old man started telling Don Sheik about the sweet potato pumpkin. He was able to defeat the pig and met Theo on the 52nd floor and became friends and returned together in the meantime. Theo felt completely disgusted when the old Man told him not to throw it inside the plant's mouth again. Don Shik was greatly surprised when he asked the old man about the number of linganates he had. I was traveling because this item was so rare in the country. Mr. Don Shik quietly told Theo that there was something more important to check next to the wild boss. Suddenly, the teacher turned around and told Theo that he had examined almost 48 from the 52nd floor to the 52nd floor using the dimensional fruit. So he asked the locals who lived in the tower about the other fishermen who came. But they always told the old man that no one else had ever come from there, outside the tower. And because of this, the old man wanted to know exactly where Asi Jun was. He could hear the question being asked. The merchant cat began to sweat, fully aware that he was now in significant trouble, and that it was impossible to conceal his lie from everyone. The scene shifts back to the 99th floor, where multiple notifications appeared informing S.E. June that due to his fourth-level harvest, he had successfully gathered one crop of a higher level, which increased his work experience. It is also noteworthy that he earned 290 experience points from this, resulting in a 5% boost to his skill. While S.E. June was picking cherry tomatoes, he noticed that he had harvested magical grade B cherry tomatoes due to his level upgrade. He realized that with a little extra effort, he could certainly harvest crops that were above sea level. Suddenly, a white rabbit descended into the underground farm, telling Seijin that he needed to go and eat something. Seijin smiled and assured the rabbit that he would be there shortly. However, as he picked up a basket full of cherry tomatoes, his gaze suddenly swept across the entire field, and he recalled what the corrupt entity had said before it was crushed and separated. Suddenly, he recognized that there was a tree nearby. He began to search around the cave, pondering that there was nothing particularly special about it. But then, he caught sight of a temporary fireplace he had made during the blue moon. He knelt on the ground, gazing at the ashes, reflecting on that temporary fire. She was. A fire remembered that when. He entered the tower first and succeeded. 
When lighting a fire it was always used. A temporary fire that will never go out. Outside but since it turned outside. I didn't even know it was fire. He turned it off and started removing the ashes. To reignite the fire. But suddenly. While he was cleaning the floor he noticed. But hidden under the ashes as he June. He was suddenly shocked to the core when. He discovered a tree sprouting and it was. Found desperate all over his farm. But it was as if the bud was moving. He was growing up on his own. Suddenly. It was like S.E. Jun was him, hearing a voice inside his head which, tell him he finally saw. Sprout Saigon was astonished when he heard, a telephone voice inside his head. However, suddenly a voice told him to look, forward, and also it was nice to meet. Ha! Huh. Mr. John looks forward from the butt. He saw a cute little elven-like creature, who was smiling while telling S.E. Jun, that she was waiting underground. For this coming day the goblin suggested that her master should divorce all fireworks because of his apple tree planted when he reached the 99th floor. It was the little dwarf girl who was initiated by Asi Jun. He smiled excitedly when he came. I know that the tree he planted is hers, now embodied in a little angel and so, my friend, the chapter has ended for today. Wait for the next chapter next week. May you be well.